music did you listen to when you were growing up? Well, from the days even before I ever set foot into kindergarten, I was listening to Murray the K. Um, I have an older brother who's now a classical musician. He plays with the Philharmonic Orchestra in New York. But uh, when we were kids, he was heavily into rock and roll and we used to sit in front of this big combination radio TV that my parents had and we listened to Murray the K sitting on the floor listening up to this radio and listening to uh, late 50s music for me, starting late 50s and uh, later on for me Phil Spector and Motown which Motown in particular was what heavily influenced me as a bass player probably more than anything else was, was Motown talking to me a couple of minutes ago and you told me you have a real love of another kind of music. What's that? Well, I've always been into country music, ma'am. Yeah, Johnny Cash is probably my favorite, uh, my favorite country performer. He, and only in the past few years, uh, through people who have turned me on to a lot of Johnny Cash's older music, I've really grown to be a huge fan of Johnny's. In fact, uh, I got to meet him at the Farm Aid show. It was like meeting God. I mean, it was great. Johnny, I think Johnny's great. I love him very much. What is it, what is it in particular about Johnny? Is it his music? I love, I love his lyrics. I mean, they make me cry. They really do. I, when I go home, I just whip out a Johnny Cash tape on a cassette machine and I'm in heaven. I could just listen to Johnny Cash all day long. Believe it or not, uh, I love Johnny, and I love his music. I love his lyrics. I think just the so they're so from the heart. Uh, they're very tender. They make me cry when I listen to them. They really do. Let's talk about that for just a second. Um, first of all, before we do that, tell me, where did you grow up? I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, where I just lived until a few years ago. I still have an apartment there. What is it? How do you think it happened that a boy that grew up in Brooklyn, New York, I, I don't know exactly. I mean, I've always liked country music. I play steel guitar. Country music, I got the country music through my love for steel guitar, probably. Uh, years ago, I just found myself attracted to that sound, and I always wanted to steal, and before I could ever afford to buy one, I took my father's power tools and built one for myself. And, um, you know, I just would go out and collect records that had steel guitar on them and somehow, although Johnny Cash in particular doesn't use steel on his records, I just found, when I found Johnny Cash's music, somehow it just, I'm a sap, I, I'm a sap in heart, man. I mean, I love, I love down home, simple, straightforward stuff. And I just find Johnny's lyrics, uh, they just hit me right here. I mean, they're really gut-wrenching stuff. I just, I just love it. It makes me cry. It really does. This show that we're putting together right now is about people's music, lyrics in particular, who have, what, that have reflected what's going on in America. you think that's uh, especially true of Johnny? I think for a segment of uh, the American population, yeah. I mean, I think that Johnny's music uh, probably goes very well with all these trucker guys that we're hanging out with here. Um, I think it's real American. I think it's real honest, very sincere. It doesn't take much to uh, decipher what he's talking about. I mean, it's, it's right up front. It talks about uh, love, loneliness, you know. Uh, drinking and ending up in jail or whatever I mean it's it's very American very Americana I think it's uh, I just think it's for real you know what do you think that does that in a rock on the, on the rock and roll side um I've, I've always liked Bob Dylan's lyrics although I think you have to decipher them a little bit I mean he makes you think I think you gotta I think I think Dylan's lyrics probably you can think about, come up with your own meaning. I think, you know, there's a hundred different ways to think about his lyrics, but I think that on the last few Dylan, Dylan albums in particular, 
I think I think he's got down a little more of the basics myself as opposed to a lot of earlier stuff. I mean, growing up in the 60s, um, I wouldn't say I was really a radical type of person. And listening to Dylan's lyrics then, I didn't know that what he was saying was really the state of what was starting to happen in America, really, because I was a little young at that time and didn't really get caught up in radicalism or anything. But uh, I think for, for me now, in, in particular his last few albums, I think, he, I think he's gotten very tender and straightforward and, and uh, I find that Dylan is doing for me the last few years what Johnny Cash or people like who affect me that, like that uh, have done to me. I think Dylan is doing that for me as well. I like Bob Dylan a lot. I'd love to meet him sometime. I've never met the man, yeah. but I really enjoy him very much. I would love to interview him sometime. You talked, you, you brought up a second ago about, um, about Farm Aid. And uh, oh. Oh. Just take a second for me, if you will, Ow. and explain to me how it felt playing there. I thought Farm Aid was absolutely fantastic, and I was really honored to be able to take part in that, more so than even the Live Aid thing. Um, again, Farm Aid to me was real American, real guitar oriented, which I prefer myself. I, I'm not heavily into synths and drum machines and all this electronic music that's happening. Uh, it's not particularly my bag, really. I like the twang. I love guitar music. And uh, not to put anything else down, but it's just a preference of mine. I love guitar. And uh, I've always preferred to play in rock and roll bands, which to me means guitar, you know? And uh, Farm Aid, with all those great country people that were there, and all the American rock and rollers that were there. I just thought it was a really great combination of people. Um, I got to meet Johnny, I met Loretta Lynn, which was really great because I love Loretta as well. Um, and it just had a great feel, you know, it didn't feel pretentious, and it didn't feel like superstars hanging out and posing and, and all this, you know, bullshit. Whoops. Um, it just felt real. It just felt real down home, and uh, I just prefer that. I just prefer that. I felt real comfortable. It was a real comfortable. Uh, it was a real comfortable day. It was a great experience. Everybody I met there was was great. And uh, do you think it finally? Do you think it finally taught us, showed us that perhaps rock and country aren't that far apart? I don't think rock and country is ever far apart. I don't know how anybody could think that. To me. Uh, to me, uh, it all comes basically from the same roots. It's all American. It all comes from, from. I mean, rock and roll does come from the combinations of country and R and B, and you know, it's just roots music, man. It's just, man, it's guitar music. It's 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 American. It's it's music. Uh, it's 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 people music. It's just, you know, I mean, it's just. It's just straight ahead, you know. I, I don't think how you can. Uh... To me, it's the same thing, you know. It's music for people, you know. When you, uh, when you travel across the country and you and you play different places, are the people different? Are the audiences different? Um. Well, there are certain areas that uh, I think I think there are parts of the country where people are maybe a little less subdued than other places. I think that also depends, uh, well, I mean, like, New York City is a great rock and roll town, but New York City audiences never seem to react as, say, uh, Cleveland or uh, somewhere really in the Midwest, down south, for instance. I mean, down south, people love to boogie, you know, everybody wants to party and have a really great old time. Uh, New York City, I think people are a little bit jaded from the amounts of entertainment that are at their fingertips 24 hours a day, you know, seven days a week. Uh, so they see a lot. So I don't know if they get as, quite as excited. Not that they don't appreciate it as much. 
they just maybe tend to be a little bit prove to me that you're that you're that good because we're cool too you know and we see everything so show me what you can do you know how uh, what's it like playing with Brian how do you like his music um well I'll tell you I'm I'm so I'm very very honored to play with Brian um I've been a fan of the cats stray cats for a long time I first saw them in England in uh, 1981 when I was over there with Billy Squire and uh, everybody in the band had gone to see Bruce Springsteen somewhere. But uh, myself and a fellow from uh, Capitol Records, we said, we got to go see Brian. No offense, Bruce. But uh, we had to go see Brian play. And uh, that was in 1981. And they just blew me away. And I became an instant fan of, of, of Brian. And um, a couple of years later, I was in San Francisco doing the Hager Sean Aronson Shreve album and uh, I got a chance to see the Stray Cats, they were in town and I really wanted to meet Brian because I had heard Brian play some steel guitar on the, on the Rant and Rave album I believe it was and being a closet steel player myself I just wanted to talk to Brian about steel playing. So I got backstage and um, Brian was so polite. He brought me in and offered me a beer and showed me a guitar he was thinking about buying and uh, we talked for a while about steals and we exchanged phone numbers but I was so in awe of meeting him that I never called him up. And uh, my girlfriend was saying, you gotta call Brian, call the guy up. No, I, I, I can't call him, I, I'm too shy to call him. And then it turned out uh, that a year later I had met him in November, and a year later to the week, almost to the day, I got a chance to back him up on the Guitar Great special, and um, which was a real honor to do, to work with Dave Edmonds and get to back up Brian and Dickie Betts and Steve Cropper and all those cats. And uh, the day of the show, Brian and I were talking, and um, I said, well, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm putting together a new band what are you doing? I said, well, I'm looking for something good to get into. And from that time on, we just, I used to go out to Long Island and uh, go down to this little studio with uh, Brian and Tommy Burns and uh, start learning the songs that eventually we, we did on the album. It was great. Brian, I love him. I think he's, I think he's great. I, Brian's for real, man. To me, he's a real, true, new, young guitar legend. And I think he's a real artist that hasn't even done all his stuff yet. He's, he's got it all ahead of him. I think you add a lot to Thank you. I really feel at home in this band. I really do. Okay, you can go play softball now. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you. How was it?